Hi guys. All right, so I have a traveler's notebook process for you today using my notebook that I am documenting the pandemic in. So this was the last video I did, so I'm just going to flip the page and do the next page. Um, so I have a little 3x4 photo. I have some white cardstock. This is just plain, plain white cardstock, the kind you would maybe put through your printer, so it's not thick at all. It's very thin. And that's going to be good because we're going to be working in our traveler's notebook. So for my stash today, I pulled out washi tape. One, two, three, four. There's six different washi tapes here. I coordinated the washi tapes to go with this six by six paper pads. So we're going to use six by six paper pads today. And this six by six paper pad is called Super Chill and it's felt from Spellbinders. Um, and I just pulled this out of my like random one-off paper pad bin and then I pulled then I went through my wash tapes and I found five that I could go ahead and uh, use that coordinate with that and then I found this awesome stamp set so this is a really old this is an older stamp set this is from the first like the first year that Wild Whisper was um, in business this is one of the lines they came out with so this stamp set has um, a 2017 date on it. So it's about three years old. Um, but it's called a No Place Like Home. And um, yeah, it's going to be perfect for documenting these um, these times when we're home all the time. So I thought I'd do maybe a repeat stamping background. So with that in mind, I have two different um, inks. I got um, Catherine Puller's Hot Tub. Catherine Puller's Twilight, and then I pulled some purples from Ultima Out, and I'm not even 100% sure which one of these I like. I'm kind of leaning toward this one, um, but I pulled two other light ones out too. I'm not sure which one. Now I wanted to show you some new products that you could grab that are, these are low budget. If you have a silhouette and you have cut files, um, so uh, Gwen over at Cut to you released some fun, fun cut files with um, like the idea of like houses. So I picked out two. So this one is the R Street cut file and it has three house borders. So this one would be really, um, this is good. If you have a silhouette, this would be really great because you get three. You can pop, you can um, size them down like I did. So they're going to fit across the bottom of our traveler's notebook page and then you get three of them and you can of course make them big you can make them small and that's really cool and then the other one that I got that I went ahead and I'm going to use today is this one again you get three titles in one cut file so really good budget item there um, and I'm going to back these in a little bit of a different way so I thought I would show you those two. These are brand new in her shop, and I'll leave her shop link below. Um, it's usually, so the shop is in Australia, and so when you go in to buy, I think it's like, they're like $2.35, but that's the Australian dollar, which if you're in the U.S. is going to be quite a bit less than that. So just... And, and since it's a digital file, it's not like you have to pay shipping or anything. Cut files are a great, great low budget kind of addition that can give you um, a lot of bang for your buck. So, okay, that is my plan. And um, let's get to start creating. I have a really cool idea for these. So I'm hoping that my plan of attack works. All right, let's get creating. So I'm going to start by going ahead and cutting this white and half by 11 cardstock down. This is not um, a heavyweight cardstock. This is just a cardstock that you would find at like Walmart or um, anything like that. It's the kind of cardstock used for printers. So it's thin, which makes it perfect for a traveler's notebook because it's going to allow us to do some repeat stamping and to do it very get some nice crisp clean images without having to try to stamp in the notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the ginormous Misty and I'm going to do, so my plan is to go ahead and stamp one of these pages completely with the little houses from that Wild Whisper collection and I end up 
stamping the one that says Home Sweet Home, and I just keep stamping it over and over again. Um, I'm going to stamp it in some hot tub ink, the um, gray ink, which I can't remember what it's called now, from Catherine Pooler. And then I did end up using soft lilac from my Ulta New collections. So those are the three ink colors that I chose to stamp this in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate my stamps. I'm going to start with just stamping right across the top. And then the next, uh, the next row of houses is going to be just a little bit offset. And then the next row after that will be just a little bit offset. And I'm just going to continue on there using all of the, the colors that I've chosen. And I'm going to make rows of these houses, but I'm going to keep them offset. Most of them kind of, I did two, um, two stamps for each house. And then I also uh, did stamping like off the page so that it almost looks like it runs almost like this was a piece of pattern paper that I went ahead and did. Now I'm going to stamp this one and I forgot to clean my ink and it got smushy, but that's alright. Um, even with a Misty, sometimes you have ink issues. <laughs> you mess something up. It happens. It's not, it's a fabulous tool, but it's not, um, what's the word? Like it's not guaranteed. Sometimes you're still going to get stuff that's stamping that gets a little must, mostly because of user error. In that case, definitely because of user error. But I'm just going to keep on stamping here, and I'm going to show you how to fix the little smudgy bit. You can't even tell in this page that it's smudgy, and in the end, that I completely covered it over. But I thought I would leave that in so that if you um, encounter the same thing, you know how you can go ahead and fix it. So I'm going to fix it the super simple, easy way. I'm going to grab another sheet of paper. I'm going to fussy cut this perfectly stamp house out, and then I'm just going to place it right over the other one that I messed up on. And like I said, none of this even matters because in the end I end up covering it up with my photo anyway, but sometimes that's just how it works. I do plan my pages out, but not to a T, let's say. Maybe not perfectly. <laughs> anyway, this is a really great stamp set, so if you happen to have it in your stash, um, it's very, very, it's a really great stash bust, busting item to get out and use for some of your pandemic photos. Okay, so I took the rest of that paper, sheet of paper and I'm making rows and rows of washi tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this house cut file with washi tape. So I grabbed all the washi tapes from my collection that coordinated with that 6x6 six six paper pad. These are not from same collection at all. That pattern paper is a one-off pattern paper pad from Spellbinders from ages ago. And all of this different washi tape is just washi tape from my stash, all different places. And I just grabbed the ones that I thought would look nice with the pattern papers. And I also grabbed the llama one because we're going to be scrapbooking or we're going to be documenting uh, what it's like to be a little bored sometimes in us when you're self-quarantining, self-isolation, stuck at home, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's what my journal is gonna be about too. So I placed the washi tape across. This is an eight and a half by 11 scrap uh, paper. And I just put the washi tape right across it like rows until I had enough rows that I could fill in the entire back of my cut file. I'm going to put Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive over the back of the cut file and just stick it down and then um, fussy cut around it. And while I am working in a traveler's notebook, let's keep in mind that if you have a large 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook page that you're doing, this would totally work. Just get a piece of scrap paper, scrap cardstock that's 12 inches, toss the washi tape in rows, glue down your cut file, and then cut around the cut file. And you can back um, a cut file with washi tape. Super easy and I think it's really fun. I love the way these little houses turned out. I think they're colorful and they're sweet and they worked really well. So I took some of that washi tape and I'm just washi taping my two uh, 
pages together. This is my own personal way of working across a two page spread in my traveler's notebook and allowing me to do it so that it's flexible, um, so that it kind of just flows really nicely across. So I'm gonna take this Chillin die cut and I'm going to, what I'm gonna end up doing is initially I started out thinking that I was going to ink it using my life-changing brushes and the soft lilac but I wasn't getting the color I wanted. Um, so then I switched to the hot tub ink and the life-changing brushes, but I still wasn't getting the color I wanted. I wanted color. So in the end, I flipped my die cut upside down and just pushed it right into the ink pad, and then I got the color that I wanted. I wanted this uh, deep saturated color on my die cut. So as you can see up there, I glued the cut file, that chillin, to this polka dotty paper and I'm just going to let it sit there and let the glue do its thing and dry and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some layers behind my photo and get my photo down. I decided on two layers. One is this kind of hexagon pattern that pulled in all the colors, the colors from the washi tape, the colors um, from the papers. So it was like a multicolored pattern. And then I chose this one that had a little bit more of like the lavendery stripe pattern because those kind of stripey patterns make really nice photo mats, I think. I'm just gonna try to figure out where on my page I want these different elements. I wasn't sure where I wanted the photo yet or the title, I'm kind of going. And, and kind of figuring it out. I also thought about leaving the die cut onto that larger sheet of paper instead of cutting around all of it and using it like that, but I didn't like how boxed in that felt. I felt like that just, there was a lot of trapped white space and kind of goofy things going on when I did it that way. But I did really like the houses down across the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and get those on the page. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut around my title there, hashtag chillin, and I'm doing my journaling. So this is my journaling. The one day I was so bored, I was just, um, and this was early guys, like we're on like week five right now, and this was like week two, maybe two and a half. Um, and I wanted, I was talking, chatting with some friends online and I wanted to show them my llama pajama pants. And I ended up taking like 40 llama pajama pants till I got the perfect one so that you could really see my llama pajama pants. Yes, that's what we call boredom. So I wanted to document that, you know, during this time it wasn't all like fun and games and crafting. Like there were days where I totally just could, was bored, uh, where I was just, you know, I didn't have anything to do and I was sick of doing laundry and I was sick of doing spring cleaning and I actually got to a point where I was tired of TV and I was tired of crafting and so those were the days when I was chatting with my friends and taking 40 pictures of my llama pajamas because why not? Um, so that's what I'm journaling about here and this is pretty much going to be the end of my layout. I kept this one super simple because I just wanted to keep the, the colors I didn't want too much embellishment, right? So I just have my, my repeat stamping pattern paper that I made, and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut through these cut files. And um, you can take the washi tape off or you can leave it on and cut right through it. It's up to you, really. I kind of just did it this way, but I've done other ones where I haven't um, taken the washi tape off where I've just cut through the washi tape, and either, either way works fine. But I'm just going through and just cutting, and that way, when I go to put this into my album, um, it's really seamless. It will become like a two page a spread that goes all the way across the page. And I do have a couple of those houses left if I want to use them for something else. So that's going to be my layout. I'm just going to add some of my tape runner onto the back of these papers and adhere them into my book. And that is today's spread. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope that this gives you an idea of how you can use a lot of washi tape, um, especially if you are not documenting in a traveler's notebook, if you are documenting in a 12 by 12 layout or and you, and you have um, a cut file you wanna use. I've done this on a larger scale. It works just as nicely. And it, it's a really kind of cool and different way to back a cut file. So I thought I'd share that little tip or trick with you for today's layout. And I have some really fun ones coming 
up next week. I let my youngest son pick out a collection and it turned into him challenging me to do stuff and it'll be fun. So that's coming up for next week. And here are some close-ups. I will see you all again on Sunday for Stretch Your Sketch and I will have a fabulous hop. Um, lots of girls hopping along with me. So, okay. See you all again soon. Bye.